y'all, UFC T. Breakdowns. We're here for UFC 277, Nunez versus Pena. It was a fun card. It was a lot of really good fights. To kick things off, we had Anthony Smith versus Mogamek Ankalaev. Very early in round one, Smith was favoring his leg, limping. He wasn't moving the way he was supposed to. <clears throat> First of all, Ankalaev is scary. Right? I mean, Smith was doing pretty well at the beginning, but um, I think it was a leg kick that Smith threw, actually, that injured him. Smith was claiming his leg was broken. He was saying it audibly, especially after the fight was over. He was saying it. It's broken. Someone told Dana in a press conference that as far as they knew, there was no fracture. And he was hurt, though. Ankoliev got him on the ground, uh, ground and pounded, TKO. But, of course, um, I think Smith was kind of out of it already because of whatever was going on with his leg. I have to wait, I guess, to find out what happened. Next up, we had Andre, um, Alexandra Pantoja versus Alex Perez. This fight was one minute of pure action. Like, they were born, they were throwing both hands. They went to the grapple. They was throwing knees. They kind of fell. Um, Pantoja jumped on Perez's back. Um, Perez stood up with Pantoja on his back. And, with, like, he had this face crank. It wasn't under the neck. He just was like, Argh. oh, it looked like it hurt so bad. The way that he was, like doing his stuff like just you hear dc yell he's ripping his face up you can see it as soon as they let go alex perez was like oh because oh, he was crushing his jaw what's crazy is this fight was literally alex p versus alex p i have it written down as capital alex p versus lowercase alex p right so capital alex p pantoja the winner actually has a win over kai car friends and brandon moreno fighting for the interim title on this card it's funny because they're talking about the rematch but they should be talking about Alex P. Brennan Moreno since he's already beat him. And he just beat Perez. And he beat Kai Car France. I I'm just saying. Next up, we had Derek Lewis versus uh, Sergi Palovich. Palovich. This is Derek Lewis back at home in Texas. I feel bad for Derek Lewis, man. This guy can't get a break at home. Fight starts. At some point, Sergi is like, he gets the upper hand. He's throwing punch after punch after punch. It looks like Lewis is really hurt. Lewis fell kind of face first. Uh, Dan Mergliata jumped in and stopped the fight. Lewis jumped up like, what are you doing, man? Why did you stop this fight? Derek Lewis definitely looked hurt. But also, on the replay, he slipped almost all them punches. He was just moving out of the way of them. It was an early stoppage. Dana White said it was an early stoppage. What's funny is when it first happened, DC was trying to explain it. No, you know, when he was going down, he was clearly hurt. And look at how he fell. This, this is a, no, that's a good stoppage. And Joe Rogan just goes, nah, I'm with him. With Derek Lewis, like, nah, I'm with him. That was an early stoppage. <laughs> but, I mean, it was. But for once, though, it wasn't like a shitty ref made a bad decision. Like, from Dan Mergliata's standpoint, and in real time, it looked pretty valid until Derek Lewis stood up, like, just like this. Why, man? Why? You ain't never seen a dude get knocked out and just go, hey, man, what are you doing? When a dude's get knocked out and they argue, they be like, no, I ain't knocked out. But Derek just stood straight up and was like, why did you do this to me, man? This is some bullshit. <laughs> like, it didn't even look like he was yelling. It looked like he was talking calmly, like, why, man? Why? It sucks, though, because I don't feel like Dan Mergliata was being a bad ref at all. I feel like he did the right thing from his perspective. But upon the replay, Derek Lewis just fell awkwardly and wasn't as hurt as he appeared. And it was an early stoppage for sure, but it's for once, I'm not like, fuck that ref. I'm just like, oh, that sucks. The whole situation sucks. It sucks for everyone except for Sergi. Because <laughs> he didn't have to get knocked out by Derek Lewis. DC is loyal to the soil, though, man. That dude immediately tried to explain why that was a good stoppage. And Joe, and Joe Rogan just said, nah, I'm with him. That was an early stoppage. I love it. So we had Kai Car France versus Brendan Marino. This is a rematch. Kai Car France won the first one. It's for the interim championship. This, I, I, I don't be understanding this kind of shit right here. You got Davidson Figueroa, the 125-pound champion, sitting ringside with his belt. And then you got Kai Car France and Brendan Marino in the ring at 125, fighting for the belt? A different belt? A kind of belt? I just, ugh. Ugh. I just think the UFC hates Davis and Figueroa. Like, if Conor had a belt, ain't nobody else fighting for fucking Conor's belt. Because Conor's dead, right? But if 
I don't know, Tyron Woodley still had a belt. I bet you they'd make him watch people fight for his belt. They don't like Davidson Figueredo. And why would they? He's like a little jungle dude who don't do what they want him to do and don't talk the way they want him to talk. And he's he's not great on the mic and the fans don't like him. And he knocks out everybody they put in front of him except for Brandon Moreno. Like, why would you like him if you're the UFC? Uh, maybe they don't dislike him, but I just feel like they don't treat him fairly. They want Brandon Moreno to be the champ so bad. And to be honest with you, I felt like he won that last fight. He just didn't get it. It was a really good fight. It was a chess match. Kai Car France is so clean, so technically sound. But I, man, Brandon Moreno was just like, I don't know if you know this, but I got this dog in me. He just was on him, just the pace and the pressure the whole fight. And I mean, Kai Car France was winning the majority of the fight. I mean, he was picking him apart. And Brendan Moreno was showing it. Oh man, Kaikar France like sliced him open with his elbow. He was holding his hand and he still managed to get it around and slice him open with the elbow. Brendan Moreno was doing this thing where he'd throw this combo that was like a one-two kick. But it would be like this running body kick he was throwing, this left running body kick, right? So he'd be like, one, two, left running body kick. One, two, left running body kick. So like literally there was a point where Kaikar France was like coming across. He was, he was, he was moving to his right as Moreno was moving to his is right, but throwing that, that, that leg kick caught Kai, Kai France, and I mean, you could see the bruising all on Kai, Kai, uh, Kai Car France's side. Say his name five times fast. He just landed it perfect. That body kick put Kai Car France down with that body kick. <laughs> DC and Joe Rogan was talking about it, and DC was like, man, if they get you with the toe, it's over. I think he got him with the toe. He got, it looked like he got him with the toe. <laughs> it looked like the toe got him. That's what he was saying. It looked like the toe got him. If the toe gets you, it's over. It looked like the toe got him. The toe gets you, it's over. Then after the fight, for some reason, uh, Moreno ask it, where's Figueroa at? So Figueroa just gets up and goes into the ring, right? Why did you even let him in the ring, UFC? Then when he gets into the ring, Moreno, instead of being like a jerk or something, he actually is like, look, man, I got respect for you, and I'd love to fight you again. Let's go number four. Let's unify the belt, and uh, I forgive you for anything you said wrong against me. I apologize for anything I said wrong to you. And then to Figueroa's credit, he basically was like, this is Brandon, this is Brandon's night. Um, let him celebrate, even though you went and got in the fucking ring. And he actually showed a lot of respect, and he said, I do want to fight you again, but I want to fight at home. Let's fight in Brazil. Moreno was like, let's fucking go. So, you know, Alex Pantoja, forget you, dude. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's how it feels to me. It feels like Alex Pantoja is just like, get out of here. You're not fighting, no matter how many times you've beaten the champ. And then for the main event, you had Amanda Nunes versus Juliana Pena rematch for the title. Nunes is the challenger now. Of course, she's still the champion at the next weight class up. So it is champ versus champ this fight. Um, uh, Nunes is attempting to become champ champ. Um, this is Pena's first title defense. She beat Nunes last time by just, just like I said, with uh, uh, Moreno, she just outdogged her. This fight, though, uh, Nunez came in, I think. She claimed she wasn't as prepared for that fight as she was for this one, and she sure looked it. She came in, first of all, she fought Southpaw for most of the fight, and when I tell you she landed this check right hook a thousand times on Pena, she was she knocked her down five times with that check right hook. The exact same, no lead, no nothing. Just Pena would come in, and she would start throwing, but her head would be there, her eyes would be closed. Like, she would be throwing just, and you would just see Amanda like backstepping. Check right hook. And I mean, she knocked her down with it over and over again. She was knocking her out the air sometimes with it. Like it looked like cartoony shit. Cause you see her flying in, bing. In the second round, she was landing it. In the third round, she was landing it. She looked really good. She was fighting really well. She was switched to the, to her, her regular stance to get Pena comfortable coming at her. And as soon as she'd come at her, she'd switch back right, check right hook. And that check right hook was landing. She also was throwing this poking left straight uh, in lieu of a jab when she was southpaw. That was, it wasn't like hurting her, but it was effective. I'm telling you, man, there's this one specific sequence, man, where you could just see it. Pena's throwing, but her head is down. Her eyes are closed and she's throwing, throwing, throwing. I don't know if her eyes are closed, but her head is down and it looks like her eyes are closed. And she's just throwing punch after punch after punch, charging in. And you just see Amanda, she throws that check and misses it. And then kind of just whoop, whoop, whoop. And she's just jumping on the way. She's got a smile on her face, like, whoop, whoop, whoop. And then she just sees the moment and she's just like, ah, pow. <laughs> Knocks her down with it. Hamby's check hook and Nunez's check hook were the punches of the night. That's all I'm saying. 
there was this moment between round two and three or round one and two when Pena's coaches, they're in there and there. And Pena was like, not there. Her, her coaches were telling her, do this, do this, don't do this, don't do this. When she goes southpaw, get into the clinch. You can get it every time. She's not ready to defend. If she goes southpaw, just clinch her. And Pena wasn't responding. They were asking her questions. She was barely answering. They'd have to ask her over and over again. And there was this point where she just said, am I the truth? And one of her coaches went, huh? Man, you got to clinch her when she get the left hand. And Pena never responded and just got up and went back in there. I don't know what was going on with that. I'm just saying. And she just, she almost whispered it. Am I the truth? And I coach, what? Huh? Man, get in there. You got to clinch her when she goes southpaw. She did start to try to do that towards the end, but I think it was too little too late. She was so tired, so beat up. Amanda was uh, got her on the ground, landing crazy elbows, cut her open everywhere. Her hair was red by the end of the fight just from blood, and it wasn't dyed. It wasn't like she turned blonde hair red. She turned brown hair red. Yeah, so every time they would get down the ground, which Amanda seemed to be welcoming towards the end of the fight, she was winning. She was getting on top. She was landing good ground and pound. Juliana threw up 25 submission attempts. Also, I think she grabbed a glove on every single submission attempt, on every single one. There were parts where she was trying to get the arm bar. Nunez would have her whole arm out, and Juliana was just holding under her glove with two hands. And the ref would be like, go wash the gloves. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> they should have had no nonsense in there. He would have made that shit stop. Get your hands off the glove. Ain't that how Keith Peter? I can't do that. Um, anyways, there was also this thing where every time Amanda would get her down, Juliana was able to throw up easy submissions. And DC, I believe, said it like, it's because Amanda's not squaring up her hips. So like the next time Amanda was in the corner, her corner was like, hey man, if you get her down on the ground, you need to try to get her head up against the fence again. And also make sure you square up your hips. I love it when the commentator is on point like that. Bisping is great at it. DC is great at it. It. Rogan's good at it too, but not quite as good as DC and Bisping, and I think that's just from their experience. You know what I'm saying? Juliana's face was a mask of blood. She's so beautiful. She looked like uh, the elephant man by the end of this fight. Cuts all over her face and hairline from those elbows. That in round five, Amanda almost submitted Juliana with a rear naked choke on the face, just like Juliana did to her. Like, it was so close. It was like, oh my God, is she gonna get, you could see Amanda's face like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure she was saying yeah, but that's what her face looked like. What's crazy is the fight was a rout. Like Amanda wanted hands down, basically from start to finish. Pena never had a chance in this one, other than the submission attempts, which she got very close with at least one of those arm bars. She had it locked, and Amanda was able to get it loose somehow. I mean, um, it probably wouldn't have been so tight if Pena wasn't holding her glove. Um, <laughs> this was crazy, though. The judges scored at 50 45, 50 44. 50 43. Whoa! That is the craziest scorecard I've ever seen in the UFC. 50 43? It was a rout. It was also the hardest victory I think Amanda Nunes has ever had. Like, and it was a rout. That's how good this Juliana Pena is. She's so tough. She's scary, man. I want to see her fight Valentina. Cause she's the second greatest fighter in the world, right? Behind um behind Amanda. I want to see her fight Valentina. Cause I don't think it would go the way she thinks it would go. But I do want to see that fight. And you know what sucks for Juliana is that she came in pompous and arrogant as fuck, and then she won. And instead of being like, you know, I'm glad I won and I knew I would win, but keep it humble, she stayed with that arrogance. And Amanda came in and showed her who the lioness is in the second fight. And I don't, I don't knock Pena for the way she behaved, but also I feel like once she won, she could have took a more humble stance, which would have made her look better in this light rather than now she lost and not like, I don't think anyone feels bad for her because the way she was acting like, yeah, bitch, that's what you deserve. And Amanda kept it professional and humble and caring the whole time, you know what I'm saying? Not, and, and, but my whole point with saying that is just like the way that you talk to people and the way that you treat people affects the way that you are perceived, you know what I'm saying? You treat people well and um, you behave like a civilized person and people generally will treat you well and behave civilized too. But if you treat people like they're beneath you, then once you fall from your throne, guess how they gonna treat you? All right, y'all, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're here at this point, I love you. Like, subscribe, follow all that good shit. At 5043, that means somebody gave her 10 eights 
for like almost every round. That's a crazy scorecard. That means they feel like Pena, like how did she survive? There were, <laughs> there were, there were fights stopped that weren't 10 8 rounds. Like the fact that it could be a 10 8 round and Derek Lewis's fight got stopped because he fell down and Pena could stay in there while getting a 50 43 on the scorecard. Like, come on, refs, what we doing here?